I am Mrs. P. Kavita, Assistant Professor of Economics, ADM College for Women, Autonomous Nagapatinam. My topic, Nature and Scope of Macroeconomics. What is Macroeconomics? Meaning, the term macro was first used in economics by Ragnar Fritz in 1933. But as a methodological approach to economic problems, it originated with the mercantilist in the 16th and 17th centuries. They were concerned with the economic system as a whole. Macro means it is very large. And macroeconomic is the study of aggregate or average covering the entire economy, such as uh, total employment, national income, national output, total investment, total consumption, total savings, aggregate supply, aggregate demand and general price level, wage level and cost structure. Um, Professor Radley, macroeconomic uh, defined deals with the economic affairs uh, in the large it concerns the overall dimension of economic life. Uh, it looks at the total size and shape and functioning of the elephant of economic experience rather than working off articulation or dimension of individual parts. It studies the character of the forest independently of the trees which compose it. Then importance of macroeconomics. First point to understand the working of the economy. Uh, the study of macroeconomic variables is indispensable for understanding the working of the economy. Our main economic problem are related to the behavior of total income, output, employment and general price level in the economy. Next one, these variables are statistically measurable thereby facilitating the possibilities of uh, analyzing the effect on the functioning of the economy. Next, making the elimination process understandable and transparent. For instance, one may not agree on the best method of measuring different prices, but the general price level is helpful in understanding the nature of the economy. Second point, in economic policies, macroeconomic is extremely useful from the point of view of economic policy. Modern government, especially of the underdeveloped economics, are confirmed with innumerable national problems. They are the problem overpopulation, inflation, balance of payments, general underproduction, etc. The main responsibility of the of these uh, government rests in the regulation and control of overpopulation, general prices, general volume of trade, general output, etc. Uh, Timbergen says uh, working the macroeconomic concept is a bare necessity in order to contribute to the solution of the great uh, problems of our times. No government can solve this problem in terms of individual behavior. Let us analyze the use of macroeconomic study in the solution of certain complex economic problems uh, in general unemployment. The Keynesian theory of uh, employment is an exercise in macroeconomics. The general level of employment in an economy depends upon uh, effective demand, which in turn depends on uh, uh, aggregate demand and aggregate supply function. Unemployment is thus caused by deficiency of effective demand. In order to eliminate uh, it, effective demand should be raised by increasing total investment, total output, total income and total consumption. This macroeconomic has special significance in studying the causes, effects and remedies of uh, general unemployment. In national income, the study of uh, macroeconomic is very important for evaluating the overall performance of the economy in terms of national income. With the advent of the great depression of, uh, of the 1930s, it become necessary to analyze the causes of general overproduction and uh, general unemployment. This led to the construction of the data on national income. Uh, national income data help in forecasting the, the level of economic activity and to understand the distribution of income among different groups of the people in the economy. 
third one in economic growth. The economics of uh, growth is also a study in macroeconomics. Uh, it is on the basis of uh, macroeconomics that the resources and capabilities of an economy are evaluated. Plans for the overall increase in national income, output and employment are framed and implemented so as to rise the level of the economic development of the economy as a whole. Fourth one, monetary problems. Uh, it is in uh, terms of macroeconomics that monetary problems can be analyzed and understood properly. Uh, frequent changes in the value of money, inflation or deflation affect the economy adversely. They can be contracted by adapting monetary, uh, fiscal and direct control measures of the economy as a whole. Fifth point, in business cycle. Further uh, macroeconomic as an approach to economic problems sorted uh, after the Great Depression. Thus, it is importance lies in analyzing the causes of economic fluctuations and in providing remedies for understanding the behavior of individual units. For understanding the behavior of individual units, the study of macroeconomic is imperative. Uh, demand for uh, individual product depends upon aggregated demand in the economy. Unless the causes of uh, deficiency in aggregated demand are analyzed, it is not possible to understand uh, fully the reason for a fall in the demand of individual products. The reasons uh, for increase in the cost of a particular firm or industry uh, cannot be analyzed without knowing the average cost conditions of the whole economy. In conclu conclusion, we may conclude that macroeconomic enriches our knowledge of functioning of an economy by studying the behavior of uh, national income, output, investment, saving and consumption. Moreover, uh, it throw much uh, light in solving the problems of unemployment, inflation, economic instability and economic growth. Next, uh, limitations of macroeconomics. There are uh, five important limitations. Number one, fallacy of composition. Second one is to regard the aggregate as homogeneous. Third one is aggregate variables may not be important necessarily. And fourth one is indiscriminate use of macroeconomic misleading. And last one is statistical and conceptual difficulties. First, uh, fallacy of composition. A uh, macroeconomic analysis, the fallacy of composition is involved, that is uh, aggregate economic behavior is the sum total of individual activities. But what is the true of individual is not necessarily uh, true of the economy as a whole. Savings are private virtue but a public vice. If total savings in the economy increase, they may initiate a depression unless they are invested. Again, if an individual depositor withdraw his money from the bank, there is no danger. But if all depositor do this simultaneously, there will be a run of the banks and the banking system will be adversely affected. And second one is to regard the aggregate as homogeneous. The main defect in macroeconomic analysis is that it regard the aggregate as homogeneous without caring about their internal composition and structure. The average wage in a country is the total of the wages in all occupations. There is uh, wages of clerk, typist, teachers, nurses, etc. But the volume of aggregate employment depends on the relative structure of wages rather than on the average wages. For instance, wages of nurses increase but of a typist fall. The average may remain unchanged. But if the employment of nurse falls a little and of typist rise much, rises much, aggregate employment would increase. Third one, aggregate variables may not be important necessarily. The economic variables which from the economic system may not be of uh, much significance. For instance, the national income of a country 
is the total of all individual incomes. A rise in national income does not mean that individual increases have risen. The increase in national income might be a result of the increase in the income of few uh, rich people in the country. Fourth one is indiscriminate use of macroeconomic misleading. An indiscriminate and uncritical use of macroeconomics is analyzing the problem of real world can often be misleading. For instance, if the policy measures needed to achieve and meaningful employment in the economy are applied to structural unemployment. In individual firms and industries, they become irrelevant. Measures aimed at controlling general prices cannot be applied with much advantages for controlling prices of individual products. Fifth one, statistical and consensual difficulties. The measurement of a macroeconomic concept involves a number of statistical and conceptual difficulties. These problems relate to the aggregation of microeconomic variables. If individual units are almost similar, aggregation does not present much difficulty. But if microeconomic variable relate to dissimilar individual units, their aggregation in one macroeconomic variables may be wrong and dangerous. Difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics. The word micro has been derived from Greek word micros which means small. Microeconomic is the study of economic actions of individuals and small group of individuals. It includes particular household, particular firm, particular industries, particular commodities and individual prices. Macro means uh, derived from the Greek word macro which means uh, large. It deals with aggregate of these quantities not with individual uh, income but with the national income. Not with the individual prices but with the price level. Not with the individual output but with the national output. The objectives of uh, microeconomics on demand side to is to maximize utility whereas on the supply side to minimize profit at minimum cost. On the other hand, the main objectives of macroeconomics are full employment, price stability, economic growth and favorable balance of payment. The basis of microeconomic is the price mechanism which operates with the help of, help of demand and the supply forces. These forces help to determine the equilibrium prices in the market. On the other hand, the basis of the microeconomic is national income, output and employment which are determine, determined by aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Microeconomic is based on different assumptions concerned with the rational behavior of individuals. Moreover, the phrase sentence perhaps is used to explain the economic laws. On the other hand, macroeconomic bases its assumptions on search variables as the aggregate volume of output of the economy. With the extent to which it is resources are employed, with the size of the national income and with the general price level. Microeconomic is based on partial equilibrium analysis which helps to explain the equilibrium conditions of an individual, a firm, an industry or a factor. On the other hand, macroeconomic is based on general equilibrium analysis which is an extensive study of a number of economic variables, their interrelations and interdependence for understanding the working of the economic system as a whole. In microeconomic, the study of equilibrium conditions are analyzed at a particular period, but it does not explain the time element. Therefore, microeconomic is considered as a static analysis. On the other hand, Macroeconomic is based on time lag, rate changes and past and expected value of the variables. This rough divisions between micro and macroeconomic is not rigid. For the parts affect, affect the whole and, and whole affect the parts. Dependence of microeconomic and macroeconomics. When aggregate demand rises during a period of a prosperity, the demand for individual 
product also rises. If this increase in demand is due to a reduction in the rate of interest, the demand for different types of capital goods will go up. This will lead to an increase in the demand for the particular types of labor needed for the capital goods industry. If the, industry, if the supply of such labor is less elastic, its wages rate uh, will rise. The rise in wages, uh, wages, wage rate is made possibility possible by increase in profit as a consequence of increased demand for capital goods. Thus, a macroeconomic change bring about changes in the value of microeconomic variables in the demands for particular goods in the wage rates of particular industries in the profits of a particular firm and industries and in the employment position of different groups of workers. Similarly, the overall size of income, output, employment, cost, etc. in the economy affect the composition of individual incomes, output, employment and cost of individual firms and industries. To take another instance, when total output falls in a period of depression, the total output of capital goods falls more than that of consumer goods. Profit, wages, employment decline more rapidly in capital goods industries than the consumer goods industries. Dependence of macroeconomic on uh, microeconomic theory. Macroeconomic theory is also depend on microeconomic analysis. The total is made up of the parts. National income is the sum of na income of individual, household, firm and industries. Total savings, total investment, total consumption are the result of the saving, investment and consumption, decision of industri individual industries firms, household and persons. The general price level is the average of all prices of individual goods and services. Similarly, the output of the economy is the sum of the output of all individual producing units. Thus, the aggregates and average that the studied in uh, macroeconomics are nothing but aggregates and averages of uh, individual quantities with which are studied in microeconomics, macrostatic and macrodynamic and comparative static. First one, microstatic. The word static is derived from Greek word static which means bringing to a standstill. In physics it means a state rest where there is no movement. In economic, it implies a state characterized by movement at a particular level without any change. It is a state according to the clock which where five kinds of changes of changes are confused by their absence. The size of population, the study of capital, method of production and forms of business organization and wants of the people remain constants, but the economy continues to work at study pace. It is to this active but unchanging process, right Marshall, that the expression static economics should be applied. Static economy is thus a timeless economy where no changes occur and it is necessarily in equilibrium. Indices are adjusted instantaneously current demand output and prices of goods and services. Macrostatic analysis explain the static equilibrium position of the economy. This is the best explained by the Professor Kurihara in this words. Uh, if the object is to show a still picture of the economy uh, whole, the macrostatic method is the appropriate technique. Uh, for this technique is one of the investigating the relations between macro variables in final position of equilibrium without reference uh, to the process adjustment uh, implicit in that final position. Such a final position of equilibrium may be shown by equations y is equal to c plus i where y is total income, c is total consumption expenditure and i is the total investment expenditure. In this diagrammatic explanation, according to this uh, static condition model, 
uh, the level of national income is determined by the interaction of uh, aggregate supply function and the aggregate demand function. In this figure, 45 degree line, uh, line uh, represents the aggregate supply function and uh, C plus I line the aggregate demand function. 45 degree line and C plus I intersect at point E. The point of uh, effective demand which determine OY level of uh, national income. Thus, uh, economic static uh, refers to a timeless economy. Uh, in, uh, it neither uh, develop nor decades. It, uh, it is uh, like a snapshot of a photo from a still camera which would be a uh, same whether the previous and the subsequent position of the economy uh, were subject or changed or not. Um, macro dynamics. Economic dynamics on the other hand is the study of a changes of acceleration or declaration. It is the analysis of the process of changes which continue through time. An economy may change through time in two ways. First one without uh, changing its pattern and second one is by changing its pattern. Economic dynamic relates to the, uh, to the later type of change. The, if there is a change in population, capital, techniques of production, forms of uh, business organization and taste of the people, if any one or all of them, the economy will assume a different pattern and the economic system uh, will uh, change its direction. The macro dynamic model is explained in terms of the Keynesian process of income provocations where consumption is a function of the income of the preceding period that is CT equal to F into YT minus 1 and investment is a function of time and constant autonomous investment. Delta I, uh, I that is uh, I1 equal to F delta I uh, in figure 2 C plus uh, I is the aggregate demand function and 45 degree uh, line is the aggregate supply function. If we begin in the period uh, T naught where with an equilibrium level of income O Y naught. Investment is increased by delta I then in period uh, T income rises by the amount of increased investment from T naught to T. The increased investment is shown by the new aggregate demand function C plus I plus delta I. But in period T, consumption lags behind and uh, is still equal to the income at E naught. In period T plus I, consumption rises and along with the new investment, it increases income still higher to OY1. This process of income propagation will continue till the aggregate demand function C plus I plus delta i intersect the aggregate supply function 45 degree line at E n in the 9 n period and the new equilibrium level of determined at O y 1 the curve steps T naught to E n shows the macro economic dynamic equilibrium path. Comparative static. Comparative static is a method of economic analysis. Uh, which was first used by German economist F. Uh, Oppenheimer in 1916. Schumpeter uh, described it as an evaluated evaluationary process by a succession of static models. In the words of Schumpeter, whenever we deal with disturbances of a given stat by trying to indicate the static relations obtaining before a given disturbances impact upon the system and after it had uh, time to work itself out. This method of procedure is known as comparative statics. To be precise, uh, comparative static is the method of analyzing in which different equilibrium situations are compared. This distinction between static comparative Static and dynamic situation is explained with the help of accompanying uh, in the figure if the economy is working at a situation uh, yeah, where it is producing at a constant rate without any change in the variables 
uh, it is a static state uh, which is functioning at a point of time. Uh, figure 3 explain two different uh, levels of income O Y 2 at O T 1 uh, time and O Y 1 at O T 2 time uh, independent of each other both the income levels relate to economic statics but income at O Y 2 level is higher than at O Y 1 levels this is comparative static uh, which compare two static levels of income as against uh, dynamic economics which traces out both AB so uh, showing increase in income but uh, comparative static is not uh, without limitations first one its scope is limited for its uh, excludes many uh, important economic problems uh, there are the problems of economic fluctuations and growth which can be can only be studied by the method of dynamic economics comparative static is unable to explain the process of uh, change from one position of equilibrium to another it gives only a partial uh, glimpse of the movements for we have only two still pictures to compare uh, whereas dynamic would uh, give us a movie uh, third one we are not uh, sure uh, when the new equilibrium will be established because this method neglect the traditional transitional period this mistake comparative static on incomplete uh, and unrealistic uh, method of economic analysis with some of the discussions among macro static macro dynamic and comparative static this economic uh, static is the study of uh, relations between uh, economic variables at a point of uh, time whereas uh, economic dynamic explain the relationship of economic variables through time in a static economic there is a movement but no change in economic phenomena while in dynamic economic the fundamental forces themselves uh, change the former studied movement uh, around the point of equilibrium but the later traces the path of uh, from one point to of uh, equilibrium to the other uh, both uh, backward and uh, forward on the other hand uh, comparative static studies and compare uh, to static equilibrium position if saving at a point of time or s1 and the um, another moment of uh, s2 this is the once over change with the comparative static but if a given rise in saving uh, leads to increase in investment output income and uh, further rises in savings this sequence uh, of uh, interdependent uh, events of uh, continuous uh, changes in dynamic uh, in nature no doubt economic dynamic is the economic static uh, study of uh, dynamic economics is a necessary adjunct to the hypothetical uh, started static analysis to enable a economist to formulate generalization the reason of uh, all static investigations is the explanation of dynamic change on the other hand dynamic economic is made up of the static situations if economic dynamic is the running picture of the working of the economy economic static relates to the still the stationary uh, positions of the economy thus uh, both economic dynamics and economic statics are essential for the study and solution of economic problems. Thank you.